me and technology did really well together. Good morning. All right. Well, for those that don't know who I am, my name is Pastor Mac. I'm the children's pastor here at Judah. Surprise! Welcome to Kids Takeover Sunday. Um, we wanted to leave it a little bit of a surprise. So for those that didn't know it was happening, you were not missing an announcement. So um, we've been in a series called Plan B, and we're going to keep highlighting that today as we are talking about building his kingdom. Um, so some of our drama was about elements of building his kingdom and what that looks like. So. As I was researching a little bit about building, um, I started looking at building projects and what does it take to be successful in all kinds of building projects. And there's always, you know, the how to do greats and the top seven reasons. And this is the top four reasons I was able to find. And so step one was have a plan. Uh, step two is establish a foundation. Step three is begin the work, and step four is prepare for changes. So we're going to be taking those principles and applying it today to how to build God's kingdom. So this is going to be a very teaching lesson, a um, little bit practical knowledge, but it's going to be applicational towards the end. So step one is have a plan. So step one is have a plan, and so luckily for us, we don't have to do a lot of work for step one. So God laid out his plan in the beginning all the way through Revelations, it's in the Word. He has his plans and his processes for good works, and so we didn't have to do a ton when it came to creating the blueprints for what God has in store for us. He's given each and every one of us a plan and a purpose according to his Word, and so all we have to do is in, invite ourselves into the blueprints. He's laid the, the blueprints lined up for us, and all we have to do is get invited in, and so what does it take to look like that? Well, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, not for disaster, and to give you a hope and a future. And as well as Ephesians 2, 10 says, For we are his creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. So we didn't have to do a lot of the beginning work, but we do have to add ourselves into it. Now, how do we do that? Well, we're going to be in Ephesians 2, 19 through 22 for the majority of today. And verse 19 talks about how we get that way. And so it says, so then you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with saints and members of God's household. Now, thanks to God's plan, we didn't have to do a lot of the blueprints. However, verse 19 gives us access because Jesus gave us access into back into his household. So step one is done, but we just first have to accept Jesus so that we can work alongside God to build his kingdom. So step one's done, now we gotta lay foundation. So when a builder is preparing the foundation, he counts the cost. He calculates all the reasonings of where he's gonna build things. And the very first thing he's gonna look at is foundation. Is there cracks, is there blemishes, is there unevenness in the building project? Otherwise, the house will be slanted. So we gotta build the foundation, and so what does it look like to have a good foundation? Jesus talks about this in Matthew verse 7, 24. It says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a sensible man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew and pounded that house, yet it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine does not act on them will be a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded that house, and it collapsed, and the collapse was great. Now, there's a really big difference between a foundation that is strong and a weak one. So what makes a good foundation? Well, we know that the foundation comes from the gospel message that is what is rooted in, and that is shared through the apostles, and it's all throughout the, the scriptures we see and the beliefs that we have. And verse 20 says it's built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. That's our foundation that we have to set everything we believe on. When building our kingdom, the foundation is the core gospel. Now, if we build it on sand, it's not going to get very good because as soon as one issue comes, it's going to crumble and not stand firm. But if we build it firm and core on the core foundation that Christ is the center stone, no matter what comes our way, we'll be able to stand firm. 
Now we have to do the real work. Step three is begin the work. Verse 21 says, the whole building being put together by him grows into a holy sanctuary in the Lord. So in order to build God's kingdom, we have to do the work. We have to start the construction. We have to start building up walls. We have to get our hands dirty. But how do we do that? Well, we have to be used by him first. And this comes by turning our beliefs, that core foundation that we believe in, into behavior. Then that behavior is going to be turned into actions. It's not just about knowing what we know, but how are we taking what we know and applying it into our lives so that people can see what we believe on the outside. This is what drives the advancement of the kingdom. We can sit here every day and know these beliefs. We can know that the Bible is true. We know that God created the world. We know that Jesus came and that he's coming back. But what does it do if it's just our head knowledge? What if no one's ever heard the gospel and we're just sitting here all up in our head and we're holding it in too tightly? Could it be what's holding you back from being a conduit of the kingdom is that you're allowing your behaviors to dictate your beliefs rather than allowing your beliefs to motivate your behaviors? So we walk in here on a Sunday and and we have our beliefs full out on a screen for everyone to see, but as soon as we leave the building, our behaviors are dictating and motivating every decision that we make. We have to be believers here on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, and we have to start shifting our behaviors. That's why God set us apart. But we're too afraid of a conviction of the Spirit to change the inside of us, so we start shifting our beliefs to make sense for the narrative of our life that we want to live or the agenda that motivates us better. It's going to create divisions and cracks in your foundation, and before you know it, your foundation is not going to have anything left to stand on. Who's heard the phrase, if you walk like a duck, you talk like a duck, and you act like a duck, you're probably a duck, right? But so many of us are walking around acting like chickens and expecting people to know that we're ducks. We're afraid to talk about our beliefs on Facebook because we're afraid of what people are going to think of us. And so we'd rather act like chickens. Or we're waiting around and wanting to act like chickens in front of our neighbors and our coworkers because, oh no, our political standing is now being attached to our belief systems. We were called and set apart, yet we just want to keep it on the inside. We have to start talking about our beliefs and putting behavior and action behind it so that we can be set apart and do. We have to be hearers, not just, or we have to be doers, not just hearers of the kingdom. We have to do the kingdom more, not just hear it. So Kids Takeover Sunday came a couple months ago. We've been talking about it for a while, and it really came about because it wasn't about me. It wasn't about getting up here because this is my nervousness. I did. It was about the kids. We have been cultivating today's church back in Kids Church. They are growing to be tomorrow's leaders, but they're starting today because we can't train them up six years from now, 10 years from now. We have to start now. And so they are working and being worshipers and leaders, and they're, and they're starting to do the kingdom now. They're not waiting. So what's stopping you from doing the kingdom? What I love about kids' ministry is their faith. It's childlike. And, and the, the scriptures talk a lot about childlike faith and the importance of it. But what about doing the kingdom like a child? They'll say just about anything. I've got a year's knowledge and experience and plenty of stories. They'll say, they will call you out. But they will also call the kingdom out. And they'll speak it loud and proud. They're not afraid. They were the most excited to get up here on Kids Takeover Sunday. We did... Um, like a mock run of Kids Takeover Sunday. We, we started back there in Kids Church and let them lead worship and start to show this is how you lead people into worship. This is how you teach and minister to others. And Nora, who, if she was up here on one side, um, she was one of our worship leaders back there. And as soon as we finished, she goes, when are we going out there? Like she thought full on we were here on the stage and we broke her heart. She was like, I want to be out there. I want to be ministering out here. I want to be a light to the, the adults. And so 
that was a few months ago, and so we're working on it, and we built up, and, you know, now she's up here worshiping and, and praising God here on the stage, and so her heart was just glowing for today. Um, but what's stopping you from doing the kingdom? I'm going to do a quick shameless kids ministry plug because that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Sometimes God calls you to the kingdom that you feel least equipped to do or the thing you want to do the least. Could God be calling you and challenging you to do the kingdom back in kids ministry, but you just say, oh, I don't like kids or I don't want to go sit in kids service because I don't want to miss what's happening in the room in here. Or kids' service is like how Sunday school, how I grew up, and I, I don't know if I can be a part of that. But what you're missing is kids are going to minister to you just as much as you're ministering to them. Watch them worship, you'll get saved, hands down. But on top of that, we are training and raising disciples and ministers and pastors and leaders. You're doing more than just teaching them Bible. You're teaching them how to be believers from a young age. Could it be that God's calling you out to the parking lot? Your introverted self out to be the first extroverted face with a smile on that they see. We got to do the kingdom. We have to be stretched and advanced. And that's by being built together by him to shaping our behaviors to becoming and standing firm on our beliefs so that people know who we are and why we are why we are. And actually doing the work, being the kingdom inside the church and out. And step four is we got to prepare for changes, both good and bad. So step, um, a few days ago, I, was, I came across this video of this man who went to Turkey. There was these um, abandoned Disney-like castles. I don't know if anyone's ever seen them, but they started this $200 million project back in 2014 to build identical Disney castles in, on the mountaintops of Turkey. And so all these people are buying and investing into the project. Well, it ended up going bankrupt because people pulled out of their investments or for whatever reason. And they end up having to forego the project, leaving about 530 castles abandoned and unfinished. And they're just up on the mountainside. So I had to ask myself, well, what happened? They weren't prepared for changes, which then left them stuck in a building process. See, if we're not careful, we will get stuck in our own processes because we weren't prepared for the good and bad changes that God's going to bring. God's going to bring you good changes of correction, of shaping, of process of sanctification, of healing. And if you're not prepared for those, you're going to get stuck saying, God's not going to use me because I got this and this and this I've got to work through first. I can't do kingdom work because I'm broken. I can't do kingdom work because I still have this stuff that I'm carrying with me rather than taking it with you, doing the work at the same time. God's a multitasker. He can do both. Or you weren't prepared for the enemy's distractions and that you're finally ready for God. to, you're doing the work and God just is ready to use you and all of a sudden the enemy stops you right in your place. God can't use you. And before you know it, you're stuck. And the enemy is trying to pull you away from doing kingdom work from the inside out. See, some of these castles were built up and had walls, and most of them were unfinished on the inside. However, some were just slabs of concrete. So their foundation was started, but never finished. Now, how many of us have started our foundation? We started our belief system. We became believers, but we spent so much of our own resources, our time, and our energy on other things that has left us spiritually bankrupt on the inside. Or we started to build the walls. We started to do God's work, and we started to to get here and do here and, and do everything that God's asked, but we got so wound up in the process of checklist Christianity, and then we got focused on just doing church rather than being the church. God didn't call us to just show up on a Sunday to, to pray, to read your Bible and do this, this, and this, but without being the church and bringing kingdom wherever you go. We've got to be the church, and that starts by doing this last verse in verse 22 in Ephesians. It says, you are also being built together for God's dwelling in the Spirit. What God can do within the Spirit is, is going to advance the kingdom far greater. You can have that foundation, those beliefs into action, where the kingdom work is continuing. But as soon as you have the Holy Spirit activated on the inside of you, you're going to start being the church more. Because you're not worried about everything else. Holy Spirit's going to bring opportunities to you. He's going to heal you faster. 
That's why in Acts 1, 8, Jesus told us that we would receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come on us so that we could be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. The dwelling of God in the, on the inside of us is through the Holy Spirit. It's activation. It's process. It's work. It's action. The Holy Spirit is activated. It was just an action. It's moving through, the, through you, making the kingdom transportable wherever you go. We have to build the kingdom wherever we are. We have to push process, the processes in order to advance his kingdom. We not only have to know his plan and add ourselves into the blueprints, but we also have to build that foundation. What do you know? What do you know? And then you've got to start doing the work. Be doers for the kingdom. Bring back that childlike faith and that childlike mentality to do the kingdom. What's great about kids is they don't overcomplicate the gospel message. Because we teach it in a simple way back there so they can understand it. But they're not at the point where fear is motivating them. Fear is a, is a learnt behavior. And so they're using everything that they know without fear involves. And I feel like the older we get, the more fearful we become of what people are gonna think and say and do, rather than just going back to the roots and core foundation of the Bible and stop overcomplicating the gospel message, stop overcomplicating kingdom work. God wants to use you here. He wants to have you bring the kingdom to your friends, to your family members, to your neighbors to that person at the gas station, whoever it is. But you got to remember to do the work and to allow the Holy Spirit to, to begin changes on the inside of you so that when it's time to come, you can bring the kingdom wherever you are. So I'm gonna close and I just wanna pray a prayer of bringing us back to the roots, bringing us back to being children. Because if we could just go back without any fear, imagine the advancement of kingdom work that can be done. How much further we'll go. So if everyone could close their eyes, I'm just gonna pray. And I challenge you today to be like children, to walk in your beliefs and let them motivate and shape and shift your behaviors to come and draw closer to God so that his kingdom work can be done because today is the day. We have to start now. His kingdom is ready to be built time and time again before there's no time left. So Father God, I just thank you for today, God. I pray for your kingdom work to begin on the inside of us and every room outside of these walls. God, I just pray for you to begin stirring up the work that has to be done on the inside of us. I pray for foundations to be set. God, I just, I ask for anyone in here that needs to first accept Jesus to be in those blueprints, that they begin to do that process, God. I just pray for us to go back to the roots of a child, for that childlike faith and that childlike mentality to do your kingdom. And it's in your name. Come on, just slip up your hands all over this room right here. Just worship, just worship. Do it in us, God. Do it in us. Do it in us, God. Do it in us. We thank you, Lord, that it's childlike to trust you. We thank you, Lord, that it is childlike to believe you can use us. It is not childish, Lord. This is not the tooth fairy. This is not the Easter bunny, Lord. We know in whom we have believed. And we are persuaded. Every persuaded person, just give him worship right here all over this room. Every person who is persuaded, give him worship. Ah, oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. When Pastor Mac and I, we sat down and she start, we, we started this process of talking about a kid's takeover the Christian education degree in me leaped on the inside. You know, your children are being indoctrinated. 
they're not convinced they can reach you at your age. So they're going all the way down to child, to children, to make sure that they put a foundation in your kids of of all kinds. Sin is no longer sin. Right is no longer right. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. They, and they decided they're not going to mess with you. They're going to go all the way down to your kids so that they can be an indoctrination. I don't know how you feel today, but I have decided, I've decreed, and we've declared today that our children are going to know the Lord. They're going to know the power of what he is. They're going to understand the fullness of the Spirit of God on the inside of them. Come on. They're going to know who they are because they are who God says they are. They are strong and courageous through him. Come on. They they are wonderfully and they are fearfully and they are wonderfully made. They're the head and not the tail. They're above only and not beneath. They're blessing, they're uprising, they're downsetting, and they're going in and they're coming out. We have decreed that they are king's kids. They belong. They've been bought with a price. They've been paid for. They're reconciled to the God of the Father. Anybody grateful today? Yay. In Judges chapter 2, verse 10, when Pastor Mac began, and we begin to sit and talk, the Bible says in Judges 2, verse 10, that there was a generation that went to be with their fathers. And there arose another generation. Another generation came up. How many of you got grandmas and mothers of the faith that you knew had power? It, oh, God, have mercy. If you didn't get one of them, then God's calling you to become one of them. But if you got one of them, you ought to give God praise for them. There's some of us didn't have a mother, but we had a church mother. There's some of us didn't have a father, but we had a father in the faith. And we knew if we could get to them, they could get to God. There arose a generation that did not know the Lord. Not only did they not know the Lord, they did not even know that their God could do a mighty work. I don't know how you feel, but I've decided not on my watch. Not on my watch. Uh -uh. They're not going to run to mama. They're going to run to a mama who will run to Jesus. They're not going to run to a preacher. They're going to run to a preacher who will run to Jesus. They're not going to run to a counselor. They're going to run to a counselor who will run to They will know the Lord. If they never learned Chubby Bunny, if they never learned the Easter Bunny, if they never learned about Santa Claus, if they never learned about the Tooth Fairy, they will know, they will know that there is a Redeemer. There is a Savior. His name is above every name. They will, I know in whom I have believed. Hey! Not only that he's God, but he's the God who can do anything. He not only can he save, but he also can heal. Come on. We watch people with no arteries get new arteries. We watch people that had cancer walk in here with praise. We watch people with oxygen get it off their nose because he is a God that can do anything. Anybody grateful that he's still delivering? He's still saving. He's still healing. He's still doing mighty works. We don't have to talk about ago, or 30 years ago, this is the day that the Lord, somebody get it prayed. I still believe you're moving. I still believe. Any believers in the room today? Is there any believers in the room today? I fix. have to come here to find the kingdom though the kingdom is here you don't have to run to your car to find the kingdom 
But if you're a kingdom kid, the kingdom is in the car. You don't have to get out of your job to find a place where the kingdom can be. Because Jesus told religious people, and I came to tell religious people that the kingdom, Luke chapter 17, that the kingdom is not here and the kingdom is not there. The kingdom is not just on Sunday. The kingdom is not just on Wednesday kingdom classes. No, that he put the kingdom on the inside of every kingdom kid. That the kingdom is within. You didn't hear what I said. That means everywhere I go, the kingdom is coming. Everywhere you go, the kingdom has now just come to the gas station. The has just come to the job. The kingdom has just come to the hospital. Thy kingdom come, thy will. Somebody give God praise in this place for the kingdom suffereth violence and the violence, they take it. Ah, good God. Somebody come alive, say. Come alive in the name of Slip up those hands right there. Come alive. Slip up those hands all over this room today. Shop. Father, anoint these hands to be conduits of miracle power. Anoint these minds to perceive what it is, is the will of the Lord. And I pray you would give them holy boldness, yeah, 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 to decree a thing that it might be established, that they would take their authority to be the legislation of heaven right here on earth. And whatsoever they bind is bound, and whatsoever they loose is loose, because you place kingdom keys in these hands that are lifted to you and extended to you. We decree it for their children. We decree it for their grandchildren. Yeah. We decree it for their great grandchildren. Yeah. We decree it for legacy generation that they won't live to see if you tarry. We prophesy from generation to generation to generation. We call it out that they will know the power in your great name. is a house miracle. put your hand over your heart come alive in the name of Jesus come alive in that hope oh, hang on I don't know who that's for, but somebody's dealing with a heart issue. I don't know if it's blood pressure. I don't know if it's a pacemaker, but I decree and I declare supernatural healing be your portion now in the name of Jesus. Oh, we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is the right there with your hand over you. This is a house of miracles. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
You didn't hear what I said. I didn't say it. The word of the Lord decrees it. He said that you were the temple of the Holy Spirit. That this same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if you've given yourself to Jesus, now abides on the inside of you. He said, greater works will you do. It's a house of miracles. You're a house of miracles. You're a, I, I'm going to say it until you get it. You are a house of miracles. You're not the miracle. The miracle worker lives within you. And you're the conduit. Oh, God have mercy. For your children. Oh, God. Jesus. James chapter 1 verse 20 is tapping me on my shoulder. This is why you and I must be doers and not hearers only. Hear the word of the Lord. Having deceived yourself, if all this is is belief, you're deceiving yourself. Your behavior Paul said, faith without works is, there is nothing that can be resurrected if you don't put action that corresponds with what you believe. Without a corresponding action, there is no exercising of faith. I didn't feel this in the first service, but the Holy Spirit has arrested my heart. If you leave the education of your children to the educational system, don't expect anything less than system kids. <laughs> Hear me today. Whatever you got to do to make sure that they understand greater is he that is in them than everything that is against them. Whatever you got to do, do it. I had an had a, a, a awesome lady come up. She said, Pastor, thank you for all you do here. I said, listen, we're just the salt. Mom and dad are the ones cooking the meal. We just bring the flavor. And if you're not happy with what's being produced, I pray that God would give you divine strategy and then, uh, and then the sword of the Spirit to go between your shoulder blades to make the necessary changes for what God is decreeing for the safety of your children in the name of Jesus. Pastor, you sound like you're anti the culture of the day. No, no. The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I like big butts. But I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Why would I want them to understand theft and death and destruction when life is their portion? And I just hear the Lord telling somebody in this room, doers of the word, doers of the word, doers of the word, uh, <clears throat> three times I've heard the Lord tell me to confirm somebody needs to pull their kids out of public school and put them in Christian school you've been kicking it around for weeks now for months you've been saying it and the Holy Spirit three times has told me stand up there and confirm what you've been saying so I'm just giving somebody confirmation today well I may have to homeschool I think every kid ought to be homeschooled at least once just to know what weird kids do. We homeschooled. Okay, I'm, I'm, I, never mind. <clears throat> I don't know who this is for, but I feel the arresting power of the Spirit of the Lord that if you'll build the king within you, 
the kingdom will be built through you. I'm going to say it again. If you'll build the king in you, he'll build the kingdom through you. Are you the king? No, you're not the king. Unless you sit on your throne. But you better be able to save you, provide for you, and heal you. But if he's the one that sits on the throne of your life, if you'll continue to build him, he'll continue to build you. And I don't know who this is for today, but I feel the Holy Spirit bringing confirmation to somebody's life. Um, it's bigger than what you're going through. The plan of God is bigger than what you're going through. You're in the wall stage, the hammer stage, the nail stage, or the cutting stage. But I promise you, if you knew what he was building, you would want that swing too. You would willfully go through what you're going through if you knew the complete picture of what he was doing with your life. So, Father, we receive it now in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, Lord, we say yes to. We yield to you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way. Let every other God be dismantled, and let God arise and his enemies be scattered. We ask it in the name of Jesus. If you've got one more praise, give it to him. All over this room. Hey, Judah family, that service was awesome. I know that the Lord is healing, delivering. He's bringing salvation. He's setting people free in the sanctuary. I know that he's doing that for you too. Um, I'm glad that you set your time apart to spend Judah with us today, our service today. Uh, if there's any way you can make it inside the house, we'd love to have you. But until then, we're so appreciative of you spending time with us. Amen. And if the Lord has moved right there where you are, just like he's moved here, we know that there are things happening, there are things changing, there are things uh, being transformed in your life, just like there are in the lives of God's people here. Do us a favor, if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, if you wanna know more about how to do that, or if God has just done something really magnificent in your life, shoot us an email, info at judachurch.org, info at judachurch.org. Send us that email, let us know. We wanna be in contact with you, we wanna help you on this walk of the believer and do everything we can to help you take the next steps. Amen. I also want to remind you of the four ways that you can give here at Judah. The first one would be through our website at judahchurch.org. The second one is through our app. The third one is through text to give. And then the last one is you can actually mail it to our physical address at 12615 Steel Creek Road here in Charlotte, North Carolina. So great again to have you with us this morning. Just want to take the time to bless you with the blessing of the house. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 11. May the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more than what you are and fulfill every promise that he's given you. We love you. So glad you've been with us. We'll see you next week.